This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Whether or not your family gives gifts during the holidays, you get to find how you give to yourself. So whether it's by starting therapy, going easier on yourself during tough moments, or treating yourself to a day of complete rest, remember to give yourself some love this holiday season. Fuck. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash IDK today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash IDK. Pipes. Cigarettes. Chewing tobacco. Which one can also have liquid running through it in your house? You might find out, I don't know about that one, Jeffries. The answer's pipes, because I thought you thought smoking pipes was actually... Was, uh, God. Although when you said pipes, I, I did think, like, yeah. water pipes. At first. I thought of the I never, My grandfather used to have a pipe, like a pipe. Yeah. I like him. No one does them anymore, but I always no. thought it was a good look. I don't think you inhale that smoke, right? You just put it in your mouth? No, I think that's the same as a cigarette. I think it's not. I don't think it's like a cigar. I don't know. A but, cigar you don't inhale. But right? yeah, you pack yeah. it in... You pack in the oh, tobacco yeah, at the end and you sort of light and you go like that. And then, yeah, he smoked a pipe. Do you do you bring it into your lungs? I don't know. Most don't people know. don't inhale the smoke into their lungs when smoking a pipe. I've never understood the, the idea of cigars. I think yeah, cigars, you just swish it in your mouth. Yeah, or cigars just taste gross. Can they make you smell bad. They're big. Make your teeth a different people color. People love them, though. And people love them. I don't fucking get it. Yeah, I don't know. People love it. Uh, do you inhale hookah? No, no, no. I don't know. No, I don't do any smells that mouth swish too. You should, uh, you should only inhale air, people. That's all you should ever fucking put in your mouth, air and and food. Water. And push air. <laughs> Guess other things. What yeah. about if you played an instrument? Oh, yeah, but okay. No. The only thing you should inhale is yeah. air. You should never put anything else. Listen to me, kids. Never put anything else in your lungs. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Um, the Give Them What They Want tour continues in 2024. It's, it's never going to end. It's going to go forever. Well, it'll be a different name. Because you're giving them what they want. I yeah. do. I give them what they want on this tour. Uh, we I are... give them what they want. If you <laughs> if you like my old specials, you're going to love this tour. There's a little bit for everyone. <laughs> January 12th and 13th. January 12th, you'll be in Baltimore, Maryland at the Lyric Baltimore. And uh, January 13th, you'll be in Boston at the Wang Theater. That was a nice theater. I remember that. And Sacramento yeah. after that. Indio, California, Vegas, it's Des Moines, a big theater, Kansas that City. Wang. Yeah. Big Wang Theater. Big Wang. Um, <laughs> then you're in South Africa. <laughs> Denver. Hey, South Africa. I'm coming to see you. We're going to be in Pretoria, which is the town. I don't know. Where that, where, I'm going to the town. Cape Town and Pretoria. Pretoria is where Oscar lives. And I'm somewhat synonymous with an Oscar Pistorius routine that he must have heard by now. Had to have. He had to have heard. It's right up there. It's one of my better ones. What if he likes it? Uh, if he comes to this show, I won't give him backstage passes. I do not think he likes that routine. I wouldn't risk it. I, yeah, I won't yeah, give him yeah. backstage passes. Not with us. Not with us. I don't think he blades. wants to have a photo. And I'll, right. I'll have a no blade policy as well, so I'll see him in the audience. <laughs> That's it. If you come to my show, if you're wearing fake legs, you're not allowed in. Just for safety. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> wait, nobody is? Well, look, I don't Africa? know what's happened to him since he's been in prison. He might have a different look. Yeah, but I'm saying you're saying nobody with fake legs allowed in your show. Just, I can't risk it. Okay. Well, if you've already bought tickets, I'll let you come. Well, yeah. if they have the plastic legs. <laughs> no, 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 oh, no, the plastic ones all day. But if you got the flippers, if you got the springy springs. I feel like you could sharpen those and make them dangerous. Exactly. They're called blades. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah, and I don't want I don't want to see you there and your bloody cross your blades like this and I'm in the front I'm like fuck that cunt's gonna come and get me. <laughs> he doesn't bounce around on stage. Yeah, jumpy jumps. Yeah, yeah no problem. <laughs> um I will be at the Sunshine Comedy Festival January. People without arms are fully welcome. <laughs> at this festival for Although sure. Although you don't clap. No no people without arms. I get, get rid of them as well. <laughs> well if they hoot and holler. <laughs> or if they hoot and holler. If you're a good laugher, you get no arms, but we're going to do it on a, on a person-to-person basis, case-to-case. <laughs> you have to audition for you have to audition. Yeah. And if you've got no arms and no legs and you've got no vocal box, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Why? They, can't, they can still enjoy it. Yeah. What if they bring a little laughing machine? What? You mean like a Stephen Hawking? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't want that. No? Don't want that. You're out. Don't want that. Um, Sorry, guys. Jim's picky. Mm, <laughs> celebrities. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're missing a head, you're allowed in. <laughs> Uh, wait a second. I let them oh, in because they can still clap. Well, it's just that. <laughs> wouldn't you love to? Wouldn't you love to? Yeah, they can still clap. And wouldn't you love to sit behind that guy? 
Oh, yeah. I've got the best view ever. Unfortunately, he's still really tall. This cunt doesn't have a head. <laughs> yeah, but you got to look at that weird neck. It's like cauterized. Yeah, and you, and you yeah. know they'd put a fake head on it. Yeah. You know they would. <laughs> oh, well, maybe people won't notice. I'll put my fake head on. <laughs> Any other uh, stipulations? No, just you can come. You, no, uh, no legs aren't allowed in. No arms can come in if you're a good laugher. No head, no come. And then we've decided, no, no head, no head, no worries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But no legs and no arms. Get the fuck out of here. Get out of there. Yeah. You, you bloody pillow with a head. No mouth. I don't want you. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Um, Sunshine Comedy Vessel, January 11th through 14th. I'll be there. Uh, come, you can go to the website and get tickets there. And I'll be at the Comedy Cellar the last week of January into February. Come out there. And then go to ID Cat Podcast on Instagram and follow Check out us the Mermaid. The Merman Podcast. Please listen to it. Yeah, me and Dave Williamson. That's who I'm going to be at the Sunshine Comedy Festival with, Dave Williamson. Right. So if you're that in man the, has head and arms and legs. If you're Love in him. Tampa, <laughs> St. He's welcome, Tampa, he's St. welcome Pete around area. me whenever you can. <laughs> Tampa, St. Pete area. Come out to see Dave Williamson and I. We'll be doing our tang. Um, yeah. I think that's All right. it. All let's, right. Uh, let's keep going. Okay. Now let's meet our guest, Charlie Ottinger. G'day, Charlie. Now it's time to play. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Judging a book by its cover. All right, Charlie. He has a diploma behind him from uh, uh, Concordia University. Is that a real place? <laughs> I hope so. I, it doesn't sound real. I know, it but it is. I'm actually yeah. impressed you can see that. That's pretty cool. Oh, I have eyes of a hawk <laughs> when a camera is directly on something. Uh, <laughs> he's got a, uh, a and fish. He, and he's got one of those fishes that sings uh, Take Me to the River yeah. or whatever. I have I one sure of those do. above my toilet. Everyone, everyone, yes. Yeah, everyone has one. Yeah. 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 Billy, the, that's, Billy the Bass. Yeah. Whoever made Billy the Bass has fucking got shitloads of money. <laughs> is that what it's called? Billy Bass? Yeah, that cunt's going to be fucking, he's going to die with cocaine and prostitutes going, I invented Billy the Bass. <laughs> my I wife god bless her soul she wanted to just put a fish up there and i said make it sing <laughs> and the rest is history um you know, so, some people inherit a house or or money or a car from their grandparents i inherited big mouth billy bass big mouth Billy Bass. you are from your grandparents yeah that that's was all, my grandpa's that's all you got from him or are you waiting for a bit more to filter down you know that's as of right now, I have that and a red fire truck toy. Ah, oh, mate. Well, the, the, you know the old saying: the man who has a Billy Big Bass and a, a red fire truck toy is wealthy of, in, in heart or mm -hmm. something. So There's a yes. saying. Yeah, that's, that's exactly yeah. I how think it goes. that was yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Socrates said that. That's it, Socrates. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so is it is it Billy Big Bass? The history of Billy Big Bass. I wish. I wish. Okay. We definitely have to do that. <laughs> yeah, now we have to <laughs> yeah. Yeah. write that down. Um, is it uh, okay? So, so you went to university, and you also you have a wonderful speaking voice. The warm timbre of your voice sounds like, um, like the who's that sports commentator? Joe Buck. Joe Buck. You got a bit of Joe Buck in yeah, your voice. Yeah. A little bit of Joe Buck. Yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah, I hear that from time to time, but nothing you, was speaking. Have you? Oh, okay. No, well, not. No, I don't think you look like Joe Buck, but you sound like Joe Buck. <laughs> and, that, and that's where he makes his, he's the big money. Um, you got BC, British Columbia on your jersey. Is it? The, the area of British Columbia in Canada. No, it's not. Is it before Christ? Are we talking about things before <laughs> Christ? Uh, no. no. You, can, you can tell them what the BC stands for. It's not going to help. What does the BC stand for? It, it's for Barton College. That's where I work. Uh, but you, but you, but you graduated from Concordia. <laughs> Concordia. So yeah, I Corn don't have to go to school here. <laughs> All right. So you, okay. So you, I told you. So I, you're a university <clears throat> lecturer. Yes. Okay. Basically. Okay. Now, um, is so this is a, a new question. This is a way I could figure out who. It, okay. So is your class mostly men or boys? You know, I'd say. We're about 50 50. That's oh, not going to help you at all. See, I was going to go a car mechanic or something. I was yeah. going to win this <laughs> way. You, you asked me on the way here because you gave me a ride here. You said, um, uh, I, I, I told you this is somewhat topical this time of year. Is it Christmas? Mm, didn't let me finish. No. Okay. I'll tell you a quick, <laughs> I'll tell you a very quick story. Very quick story. Okay. My brother, who's in the room with us right now, um, he had a he had a star in his eye. He looks terrible, but by the time this <laughs> by the time this podcast is happening, he'll be back to normal. 
We hope. We hope. We anyway, hope. so we were there, and there was a there was a Mexican lady, an older Mexican lady. Her race doesn't make any difference, but she was an older lady. She was in uh, the waiting room, and the nurse is asking a whole lot of questions, like, "When was the last time you had this? When was?" And they were, they were doing a full health check on her. I know when this woman started menstruating and when she stopped menstruating. She started <laughs> at sixteen and she stopped in her fifties. She was adamant, <laughs> right? This she was eighty two years old, and she kept talking, kept talking, and then and then and then they go. Um, do you ever feel hot? Do you ever feel cold? And when they went, do you ever feel cold? And she goes, more so this time of year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's on her medical record. Yeah. <laughs> that, that the December months are a bit more chilly in her world. <laughs> anyway, is it is it is it that eighty year old woman we're talking about? <laughs> no, but I'd like to learn more about her. Oh, yeah. well, well, I, I've already told you how much she menstruated. She had three kids. I said, wow. <laughs> I said to you that this was. Topical this time of year, maybe in a, maybe not this week, maybe in a couple of weeks. Christmas and a couple of weeks after, maybe a week after that. New Year's Eve. Yeah, it's it's topical the around that day. time, and 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 pertinent to somebody that's on this podcast that has to deal with this now, probably as a take it head on. Oh, uh, Santa Claus. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I thought you were getting a job as a Santa Claus. What? Because Christmas. I don't look anything like him. Fat. Your body. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Got yeah. The, not you the got beard. No, yeah. you wear a fake the beard. Worst Santa beard. I don't imagine ever. Santa Claus yeah. with this voice, though. And I was like, yeah. Hey, kid. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Sit on my lap. I don't know. <laughs> do they even make those? <laughs> you know, what there's you, no real Santa. Yeah, Why what, am I even doing an impression of myself? What, what you want is. <laughs> what you want is Buggy, Buggle, or Yahtzee? <laughs> boggle? Yeah, Boggle. <laughs> Santa loves Boggle. <laughs> boggle or life? <laughs> I find out life sucks. All right. So is it is it is it Forrest playing Santa? Okay, I need a hint. What do I need to do? Oh, grow a beard to play Santa. No, <laughs> is it beard growing? I have health issues. Is it, is it weight loss? See now, like now, it's like, what do you kind need of. to do? Well, and I go, how do you get to weight loss? Oh, you eat less. All right. What we're talking about <laughs> is exercise science. Exercise science. Yeah, don't. You, why is there a question mark? Is that a that? real thing? I thought <laughs> we all know that you exercise and that's good for you. Yeah, but how do you think they figure out what exercises yeah, yeah. do what? Well, what it does is it speeds no. up your heart. Hold on. Just stop. Just, make, just uh, stop. You know, there's plenty of time for questions. No, I mean, we could stop right now. That's Char 10 out of 10 right there. Char <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Charlie Ottinger <laughs> is an assistant professor of exercise science at Barton College, BC. He has over a decade of experience as a personal trainer and strength and conditioning coach. He is also currently a consultant in both human performance <laughs> research and military special forces training. Previously competed as an elite power lifter, and he's certified strength and conditioning specialist and also a certified exercise physiologist. Over a dozen published journal articles, and he is also the owner and founder of RadioactiveLife.com, which specializes in helping people find their fitness wavelength. You can find him on Instagram at Charlie Ottinger, that's O T T I N G E R. And um, so over a dozen. That says worth, personal page not worth following. Good for putting that in there, Charlie. And then <laughs> so over, at Radioactive no. Life, and there's no E in Radioactive, at Radioactive Life for fitness info, tips, et cetera. I'll say those again at the end of the show so you guys can get them. Um, yeah, you can tell us a little bit more how you got into this, Charlie. So wait a minute. So over a dozen published articles, so yeah. that means 13, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you would have gone over 10. <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's like And then someone, when I hit 20, so I can say 10. Neil Brennan the other day articles. said I was in his top 15 comedians. Yeah. So you're like... So yeah, I'm, I'm 11, I'm 11 yeah. to... Yeah, yeah, 11 through 15. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, if I come in third, yeah. he's not going to go top 15, is he? <laughs> if you ever went to someone, you're in my top 98 comedians. <laughs> oh, I wonder what number I might be. 43. The 50s, maybe, yeah. 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 So 13 articles. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. A baker's, yep. a baker's dozen articles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's why yep, bakers... Exactly. This, this leads back to it. Bakers, they get the extra bit because they're fat fucks. So have oh. you always been into this, Charlie? Is this... Uh, you studied and you've been in this your whole life? Or? Yeah, actually, it's funny. I have pictures from, like, when I was six years old on the beach, like, flexing my muscles because that's... You know, I was just a weird kid. Mm. And... Um, you know, fast forward to high school, I started, you know, working out to get better at sports. And then pretty soon I liked working out more than I liked playing sports. And it really worked in my favor because I wasn't good enough at sports to do anything with them anyways. So ended up going to college for exercise science. And it's, you know, it, 
it's that funny topic that you you tell somebody i'm going to go major in exercise science and they're like what the hell is that it's kind of like you, you just work out and it's good for you and that's it there's your degree well it, it it's a roundabout way of saying that but um ended up going to grad school because you kind of have to do that in exercise science and then I always wanted to teach, and to teach in a STEM field, you have to get a PhD. So I went ahead and did that. Um, I've been kind of personal training all along, and it's uh, it's been a journey. So I used to love working out. Now I just work out because I know I have to, and I and I really hate working out uh, these <laughs> days. And I think that helps Selling me relate it. to people. So that's that's kind of where um, I'm uh, going with radioactive life these days. I had one period the, okay there was one period i was living in england where i worked out every day for about five months and it was i was still drinking and everything but it was quintessentially the fittest i've ever been now i, I work out about twice a week at the moment you know look and i, I take steroids i'm a i'm a 12 year old girl well i don't know if people don't <laughs> um no but i worked out for five months non-stop and the reason i stopped was because i'd heard from people who exercise all the time eventually I would get into it and I would start looking forward to it and I would miss it if I didn't do it. Yeah. I never liked it, not once. <laughs> I did it every day for five months. At the end of it, every time was like this. Ugh. But I still did it. And I still do it now because I think it's an important thing to do. I have push-up competitions with my son. That's one of the big things we do. That's cool. Yeah, hey, yeah, That's yeah. good. Yeah, we, we, we log in like 350 push-ups in a day. Like if we start at the, in the morning, at the end of it, you're fucking, you're, you're dead. You're dead. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough yeah. if you. That's a lot. It's a lot. No, we start in the morning. We you got to do lots of ten, and then like the other person has to be in the same room as you when you do it, and the wife adjudicates as well. If you're a professor yeah, of exercise important. science, though, you have to stay in shape. You can't show up. Ah, you can't show up to class. Like that. No, say, no, that I, I've got a theory in this because I have a friend. I'm not going to say who he is, and he's he's a really nice guy. Um, and he lost a lot of weight and he became like uh, a personal trainer. He's also a stand-up comedian. But then he gained a lot of the weight back, right? And so he's like, oh, it's very hard to personal train when you show up fat. But this is the thing, right? Forrest, you could be a personal trainer. Oh, yeah? You just say you used to be 600 pounds. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Uh, <laughs> killing it. <laughs> you top end it. You top end it. And people are going to be like, wow, you Whoa. fucking smashed it. <laughs> no, nah, there's too many and pictures then, of me on the internet. No, no, no. You got rid of all the bad photos. You don't live in the past, man. You don't live in the past. Yeah. You're, you're, fucking, you're fucking personal training in the future. All right. Here's what we're going to do. Get shredded like Forrest. <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask Jim a series of questions about exercise science. <clears throat> At the end of that... Uh, Charlie, you're going to grade him on his accuracy, 0 through 10, 10 being the best. Jack's going to grade him on confidence. I'm going to grade him on how hungry I am. And at the end of that, we're going to add all the scores together. And if you score 21 through 30, this is a very dated reference, though. We're going to pump. Pump it up. You up. Hans and Franz. Pump it real good. Remember them? No, no, no. I, I didn't mm. see any SNL until that I sucks. moved here. You're not going to get this next I one. Know, I know of, I, I saw the Dana Carvey okay. documentary. We're but. going to pump you up. <laughs> 11 through 20, listen to me now and believe me later. You don't know that one? Donald that was from Hans and Franz. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Zero through 10, what do you think it is? <clears throat> um, pumped. Jack, any guesses? No. Jacked. Girly men? Good guess, because that's what they say, but 0 through 10. Fat, disgusting blob with no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Kill yourself. <clears throat> oh. It's a little harsh, that one. That takes yeah. a harsh turn. Yeah, 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 it does. You shouldn't um, say that sentence while you have indigestion. You, you <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't indigestion. <laughs> it's because I'm getting over this, this cold. And I had some in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, I'm dying. Um, <clears throat> all right. Let's uh, start here, uh, Jim. What is exercise science? It's the science of exercise. It's when, what you do is, right, it's like you might go to the gym and just exercise, lift up a few heavy things, run on, run in spot and, and skip on some rope and all that type of stuff. But what's the science behind it? I'm glad you asked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Um, it's things like, you know, when you lift something up repetitively over and over again, why does that build muscle? How does it build muscle? What is the science? When you exercise and your heart rate goes up, how does that burn calories? All right, we're moving to the next thing. Interesting. Can't, we're not doing this. Maybe we can go to university and learn some more. Okay. <laughs> okay. What is kinesiology? 
Ooh. Uh, uh, so, Kinesi. <laughs> Kinesi. Yeah. That, is that when you go, like, you stop eating carbs and you start, like, uh, and you, you piss on a stick or you, you wet it on a stick and then it says you're in ketosis? Is it ketosis? Because ketosis is the burning. Your body goes into ketosis, <laughs> which means it's burning more rapidly. The fat, mm-hmm. boom, I fucking figured it out, bitches. Great. All Good right. for you. It's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the burning of fat of the body. It's how your body changes with the times. You're not going to do well in confidence because you keep asking, is that correct? So. No, 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 no. Who, who were the first people to exercise? Uh, Adam and Eve. Yeah. Um, it was probably him running away from her because she wouldn't shut up. And then he was like, oh, no, no, it's, uh, that's probably a bit, that's a bit mean-spirited. I've been mean to Eve. Um, what Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, they would have run. Any more biblical people? Yeah, Bible. Noah. Fucking, Noah. He, he was on the ark diet. <laughs> the fucking get ripped with ark. You paint a bit of wood. You paint a bit of wood. The ark, the ark, the ark diet. Or, or, or what do you mean? The first people to exercise. What a ridiculous Jane Fonda. Okay, it's good. Answer. Uh, Jane Fonda was a, the, the guy who um, had had the Olympic. They had the big stone above him that had the book that came Atlas. out. Atlas, yeah, Atlas. He did yeah. it. Atlas. Okay. Who is Eugene Sandow, and why is he relevant? First to person ex- exercise. <laughs> Next fucking question. <laughs> Who is Eugene Sandow? Why is he relevant to exercise science? He's Eugene. Like, okay, Eugene's a nerd's name. Eugene would have been picked on in school for being called Eugene. He's like, you fuck off when I'm older. You fuck off. It and might then, be Eugene. Yeah. And yeah. Then they, that, Eugene Edwards? And then yeah. they stoned his house, and then he went to get back in his house. He's like, these fucking people. He lifted all the rocks and moved them. And then mm-hmm. the next day he woke up, and he went, ooh, ooh. Feel a bit tense in the arms. And then he noticed his arms had had more definition. And he, so he turned the negative into a positive. Thank you, Eugene, and all the work that you've done. <laughs> what is the hill muscle model? Uh, hill. The, the hill, hill, muscle, hill model. muscle model. Um, I, I once went out with a model who lived in the hills. Does mm-hmm. that count? Sure. Yeah. Her name was Vanessa. So her. What are the muscles? Uh, she wasn't as toned as you think. No. I don't remember Vanessa. All right. What is so I made one up. I made a person up so I didn't get I in trouble. Know. Jesus Christ. What is the sliding <laughs> filament theory? Uh filament. 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 So, sliding filament. Mm-hmm. What's a filament? Oh, the filament is the thing that's inside a light bulb. Yeah. Right? That lights something up. It's sliding. <laughs> and the it's- theory is that you can't you can't slide light. Light has to be stationary, even though it moves at the speed of light. What does that do with exercise? Exercise. We'll find out because later. the faster <laughs> you move, the more calories you burn, idiot. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Um, who started the first fitness club? That's how I'm gonna ask this question. Oh, the first fitness club. So, person uh, you might know their name. I I would say it was Joy Luck. She did books and fitness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even who wrote that. The Joy Luck Club. <laughs> Yeah, it was a book club. What is it? The Joy Luck Club was a book club. No, but it was written by somebody else, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. The Joy Luck Club is... Amy Tan. Amy Tan, thank you. Okay, I changed my answer. Amy Tan. <laughs> okay. Why is... Do you know what the mitochondria is, first of all? Ah, uh, the mitochondria. The mitochondria. It's, it's a river that runs from <laughs> Arizona <laughs> to the Argentina. The, it's, the mitochondria. It's in, it's in cells. It's in your cells. The mitochondria. Oh, it's in the hearts and minds of children everywhere. The mitochondria. Okay. So. Old man conja. He just keeps running. Here's a question. <laughs> Here's a question you can bullshit. Um, what is metabolism? Oh, they're one of the big four heavy metal bands. <laughs> <laughs> metabolism from their album, uh, Metabolism on Metabolism. <laughs> from, from their death metal record, Hungry. <laughs> do you want to answer this? I eat so much food, but I do not lose weight. Metabolism. <laughs> Kerry King played guitar for him once just when their guitarist was sick. Yeah, oh, he did. He did. He's the stubborn mm-hmm. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's when they opened for Slayer. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you not Damn want to answer straight. this? Metabolism? You know the word. Oh, metabolism. Metabolism oh. is... Oh, okay. Metabolism is um, how <laughs> fast your body burns off calories. Okay. And I don't have a fast one. I don't have a slow metabolism. You know when they go... Like my father... My mother was a big woman, I, uh, to put it heavily. <laughs> <laughs> Heavily. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, but my mother was a big woman. My father is a skinny fella, right? A skinny fella who eats like a fucking animal, right? Yeah. He eats all day. He never stops. And it turns out he goes, oh, I've got a thyroid problem, right? He's, he's got an overactive thyroid that mm. makes him burn the weight off. Is it a problem? I'm fucking, yeah. I'm looking forward to my future thyroid problem. Look it up. Every time I go to a doctor, how's me thyroid? Tell me it's overactive. Yeah. I've never heard anyone <laughs> die from the thyroid. I know there's some cunt sitting at home holding their thyroid right now going, I'm not going to make it to Christmas with this thyroid. I think it's, but, I think, I don't think it's down there. But. Oh, where is your thyroid? Is up here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Up there. Oh, oh, God, a bit, bit thyroidy. I think you got to take medication, probably. I think Doesn't you, your dad take medication. For that, yeah, he takes some medication. Yeah. yeah, but also I think your thyroid should be in your thigh. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. Mm. How does weight loss work? <laughs> <laughs> if you're telling me you have the answer there, Forrest, I'm going to be very uh, disappointed. I'm not the expert, Ned. I'm not the expert. <laughs> How does it work? Um, well, in my experience. Uh, you get a comedy special and you starve yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's, you need a new comedy special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you have a comedy special, you get down you never to- never look better. That's, that's the problem is whenever I walk on stage, I'm the oldest I've ever been and yeah. fatter than I am on like the poster in the foyer. Yeah. Whenever I walk on stage, that first, like there'll be 3,000 people and the initial thought will be, geez, they're going to be disappointed in this blob. So, ah, so, that, yeah. Forget you, even at the clubs, that they still use this one. I have newer headshots, yeah. but they still use this headshot from when I first moved to LA and I was like fit and stuff. And I'm like, Nah, that's not where you're going to see it all. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. People think you've had a terrible week. Misleading. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, so what, what was the question? Well, how, do you, how does weight loss work? Yeah. So, so you, the caloric, caloric intake that you take in, so the calories that you take in, mm -hmm. you have to burn off more than that, and mm -hmm. that's how you get weight loss. So if you take in 2,000, mm -hmm. now you're going to burn off probably 1,800 just hanging around the house and living. doing things and just living. But- why don't you exercise and do another 700 calories, knock them off, and then you've locked, you're have you at minus 500. That's all weight loss, baby. How and why do your muscles get bigger and stronger after lifting weights? When, they are, when you lift weights, your muscles tear and then they have to repair. And when they repair, they repair larger and stronger. See, even with bones, when something breaks... And it's put back together. It's stronger than it originally was. Yeah, you're never you're never better on this show than when you're rhyming. Let me tell you right there. Tear and repair. That's Tear and true. repair, yeah, baby. Yeah. The it distance is a, of existence. It's the distance of existence, baby. <laughs> is lifting weights bad for your heart? <laughs> it depends how you. I would say no because it's it, it's exercise. But if you had a weak heart, you should watch how many weights. I'm not. So if you're sitting at home with a shitty heart, I'm not encouraging you to go lift weights. Mm -hmm. But I would think for a strong, healthy person, I believe that lifting weights would be good for your heart. Uh, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey, I'm a big fan of the therapy. Mm -hmm. If you go through tough times, always help to talk to people. I'll tell you this much: therapy can't make it worse. And yeah, it just just chatting to someone always feels like you're having a problem as well. But also, you need tools to deal with how it is life in general. You don't even need to have anything big going on in your life, and therapy can help yourself. Uh, whether or not your family gives uh, gifts during the holidays, you get to define how you give to yourself. And the holidays are a great time to do that. So whether it's by starting therapy, going easy on yourself during tough moments, or treating yourself to a complete day of rest, remember to give yourself some love this holiday season. Now, I've benefited from therapy. I'm in therapy at the moment. I have some little blockages in my head that I find therapy helps with. Have you ever done therapy first? Yeah, I've done therapy a bunch. I need to do more now, but... um. I think it's good to do that your whole life. But yeah, I've done it since I was little. I've had I quit it all the time. I'll be honest with you. I don't stick with it. And then I go, I'm fine. And I stop. And then I always come 
Straight back. Yeah, you should just stick with it. Straight back. I always feel lighter after a session in therapy. Part of the problem I always had with therapy was leaving the house and actually going to the therapist and sitting in the room and pressing the button and waiting to go through the door and all that type of stuff. But with better help, it's online. Uh, if you're yeah, thinking- it's the worst because you're in the waiting room. That's oh. like the worst part. Especially like in in LA more, maybe it's because we're just like- I've done I, therapy in my like, underwear and a t-shirt many a time. But I'm always like, like, I don't want anyone to see me because then I'm going to, I don't know. Sometimes you get that in your head. You don't want people to see you, yeah. but you don't have to do that with us. You if just, you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get messaged, messaged, matched. With a licensed therapist and switch therapist at any time for no additional charge. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash IDK today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash IDK. I can, or maybe this should be should, I don't know, children lift weights. That they can, but uh, they? I don't believe they're not. I don't believe they're meant to until they're about sort of fifteen. Um, I think I think because there's something to do with bone growth or something like that. Okay, you know, I, I, I might be wrong, but but my son's up for lifting weights, and I'm I sh- I, I'm, I'm curious what the answer to that question is. Okay, a couple more questions, and we'll get the answers. Can exercise help you live longer? Of course, it can help you live longer. What type of fucking what type of fucking weird... If, if, if that's not the answer, if I don't get a point for that, <laughs> right? Like, what are we... Is this the 1960s? Oh, yeah, so the good diet and some cigarettes, you can live forever. <laughs> I don't know the answers. They're not in here. Yeah, it can help you live longer. Here's, of course it can. Here's another one you'll get upset about. A question. Mm. Why do you get out of breath while running? <laughs> Never run. So I'll have to take your word for it. Yeah, uh, okay. Why do you get out of breath? Because you're exerting a lot of uh, wind out. You, you you have to draw more wind in to make, because the heart's beating so much quicker. Yeah, but why wouldn't your body just be able to do it? Well, because you, I don't know the, the, the science. I don't know either. Such, I don't know the answer. But, but it's with, with exhaust. Okay, so, so it's not like everyone's breathing good when you're fucking, right? When you're fucking, you don't just go at the end of it. Yeah. That's how you. That's how you know you've been fucking. Okay, um, it's good. I like it. Give me a point. Last question: What are steroids and how do they work? Um, anabolic steroids are growth hormones that, when injected into the muscle, not into the vein, when injected into the muscle, um, can uh, um, add uh, different chemicals to your body like testosterone and stuff like that to make the muscles expand. You still have to exercise on top of it to make it work, I mm-hmm. believe. But a lot of the steroids that are used are used on cattle, you know, and I don't see sheep fucking exercising and they come out massive now. Like if you see like a cow that's been given steroids, that thing's a monster compared to what it's meant to be. Mm -hmm. Or even sometimes, I'm a big fan of a chicken sandwich, me. And then sometimes you get this chicken breast that's like, it's too big. It's bigger than a chicken. Too big. I want a regular sized chicken. Yeah. To get a regular sized chicken now, what I need to have is a quail that has steroids in it. (laughs) Yeah. I'm I'm in a loop. Charlie, uh, how did Jim do on his knowledge of exercise science? Zero through 10, 10 is the best. You know, not bad. I'd say Mm. if this was 20 years ago, you would have gotten a few extra points. But today I'm going to give you four. Four. Mm. Ah, See, this is the thing is you're working off the the modern science, right? Which I don't particularly believe in. Back in my day, we had a food pyramid. That's how we got healthy. And Mm -hmm. what they told us on the bottom section of the food pyramid was to eat as much bread and pasta as possible. Yeah. That's your staple. (laughs) You want to get all your bread and pasta in. Second, they gave fruit and vegetables a run. Yep. Yep. Next is meat. Yep. And then the next bit is like oil and fat at the top. Oh, then the next bit's like eggs. Dairy. 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 Yeah, dairy's a little bit. And then a nice triangle of just bullshit. And then there's a triangle that's just like sugar and oil (laughs) and salt. And uh, fucking, it didn't steer me wrong. Look yeah. at me. Um, yeah. go- Maybe look at society. We're all healthy now. Yeah. Work for everyone. We're living. We're living longer than we should. Though we're living. We're, we're doing something right because that's, we're we're living. Doing something right. We're doing. I would say that's medicine and science, but some well, people don't believe also, in that. So. Okay. So also, so so it's my dad's generation. My father worked in construction, so he did. He was physically fit because he was lifting heavy things and doing a manual job, right? Um, but. 
His generation never exercised. My parents' generation, there was no gyms in Sydney when I was a young kid. There was like, like there was, but not commonplace where they're in every suburb. You know what I mean? Like, and they were, they were eating better, but they weren't working out. So it all worked out. Now we've got a generation of people who exercise, but eat fucking chemicals and shit, man. How did Jim do in confidence? I'll give him a six. Thanks, Jack. He was really confident, but then he kept going, I think that's right, which hurts. Yeah. No, no, no. It's from my album. I think that's right. That's a total of... Uh... <laughs> You're just plugging it. Okay, 10. <laughs> okay, well, now we're up to 14. I think um, that's right. I'm not very hungry. I think you're wrong. I'll give me a one. I think we're singing a similar song. It's 15. I think that's right. <laughs> I'm giving it to Reba. Listen to me now and believe me later. That's what you got. Ooh. It's kind of like what our podcast is anyways. Yeah, I like that. All right. Charlie, what is exercise science? Uh, Jim, I don't. We don't need to repeat what he said. It was a lot of. Is the science nonsense. of exercise? Yeah, it's when you is correct. And, and the funny thing is, how did you do it again, Jim? I don't remember the answer. <laughs> okay. Tell us what exercise science is, Charlie. Yeah, I don't remember his answer either. But in, somewhere in there, I wrote down a check mark, so it seems that he kind of got close to it at least. Mm. One point. Um, yeah, I gave you a point for that. So. It is, in short, the science of exercise, but that's just saying the phrase backwards. So we think of exercise <laughs> as science as the why behind everything. You show up to the gym, you lift some weights, you do it for a while, your muscles get bigger and stronger. Why? You start running, you get out of breath. Why? And so we're, we're taking all the whys to try to essentially uncover um, like a blueprint, essentially, of how our body works, how it adapts to exercise. And that helps, you know, progress uh, health, fitness, disease, medicine, all sorts of stuff. So it's a really widespread field, um, and all of it just comes back to the the why of everything. What exercise would you say is the most pointless of them all? <laughs> but, well, I think it would depend on who you are and what your goals are. So I would say, what's your least favorite kind of exercise? I don't like doing the leg stuff. Leg stuff. I like to right. do just the upper body. Is and that's why my upper body is so ripped. <laughs> but well, then no, no, I don't, you, I don't the like. I don't like that one where you sit like this stuff. and you go like that. You go boom, boom, boom like that. We can't see your legs. It's like yeah, but I've already got nice legs. You don't want <clears> them, <throat> buddy, beefed up anymore. <laughs> what were you saying, Charlie? And then what was the? The so for Jim, then the least important exercise for him is leg stuff because he won't keep doing it. Well, there's I think no point to even I, put it in there at all because I feel like I'm exercising the legs all the time by walking, like they're getting a natural exercise. The legs they, they already seem to be doing stuff, yeah. But I think what Charlie's saying is like, look, if you're not going to enter bodybuilding competitions, your whole body doesn't like as long as you're doing some exercise, it's good, right? Is that what you're saying? Or? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think there's a lot of people out there like. They're gatekeepers with exercise. So you have to do this. You have to do that. You know, to Jim's point, walking is exercise. But in in the grand scheme of people, Jim's a relatively healthy guy, right? And so, <laughs> walking isn't necessarily stressful for your legs, but it is maintaining. Your I nice I believe legs. in the ten thousand steps a day theory. I try to do that, which I don't always That's achieve. Good. But when I'm on the road, I try to do that. I try to get out and walk. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we over Europe, we were doing 10,000 a it. day. We were doing like 20,000 yeah, a day. 20, yeah, 20,000 a day. And when Europe. I got back here, my my phone was like, what's happened? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> back in the land yeah, of cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's Your phone got back there, here. The went, latest have you become a quadriplegic? The, the, <laughs> uh, the latest data is showing that you should actually strive for about 7,500 steps a day. Uh, right, and then so you're and overshooting is, it. Is ten thousand like, but you can do more, right? It doesn't doesn't matter. You can yeah, but there's no additional benefit in regard to health, longevity, stuff like that. So, what's the optimum amount of exercise to be done to live the longest? And I'm going to say that that exercise can help you live longer. Yes, Hold it on. absolutely can help you live longer. We can jump ahead to that one, and I think the important designation is like that's that one is common sense, right? Everybody knows exercise helps you live longer, but the important thing is that exercise, the data will suggest it adds about three to five years uh, to your life. But the important part is that it adds that three old? to five quality years of life. Oh. So we think of a lot of people, those last couple of years they're living, sometimes they're sitting in an armchair all day. They're in hospice. They're not They're not living, right? Well, as exercise, especially in as you age, 
helps you maintain your independence, your mobility. You can actually live life. And so I think yeah. that's the important thing mm -hmm. is that like the three to five years doesn't sound that great. But when you consider it's three to five good years, now it sounds a lot more important. Charlie, they're watching telly. That's a life well lived. <laughs> I don't like how people always say that they lay there and they've got a quality of life. I want to move as little as possible. <laughs> You got to get up, shower. I know that's up. that's the big one of the day. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> having a shit and showering. My mother and my brother's here. He can vouch, right? From what would you say, age forty? Earlier. Yeah, okay, so let's say where, well, but she still went to work and stuff like that. From from really about age, my mother never left our block of land by foot. She lived there for 50 fucking years. She never left it by foot, right? She was only driven on and off the property and she laid in a lazy boy for the last 40 years of her life. Didn't fucking move, just watch telly. And I, when I was young, I used to think to myself, oh, what a waste of life. She didn't move. And now, fuck, I love telly. Yeah. <laughs> Man, she had a good life. <laughs> She really crushed it. She <laughs> sat there eating chocolate and watching TV and almost made it to fucking 80. Ah, oh, uh, what, what a wonderful life. They should make a Christmas movie about her. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is kinesiology? Jim said from the word kines, stop eating carbs, piss on a stick, ketosis. He is going into ketosis, burning fat away. I yeah. bloody figured that out, man. You figured out ketosis, but not kinesiology. Not so enough. kinesiology is a specific branch of exercise science, and it's a science of human movement. So you think about walking, running, jumping. It's essentially looking at these things and describing mathematically and qualitatively how movement happens. Yeah. Hmm. yeah that's Why does it have to have a difficult name? Why don't you just go to the study I, of movement? I didn't come up with a name. I'd Mo call it movement science. It'd Mo be easier. Movement science, yeah, it'd be easier. Movement yeah. science, there movement you go. Movement science. Jim, what is kinesiology? Movement science, man. There you go. Nice. Um, it. Yep. From the word ketosis. <laughs> <laughs> Who were the first people to exercise? Jim said Adam and Eve, then Cain and Abel, then got all the way up to Noah, and then landed on Jane Fonda and Atlas. Yeah, I made a joke about Eve that I'm not happy with, because I was just saying that there was two people there, and he got sick of talking to the one woman. Yeah. Yeah, still makes sense. I think you're okay. Yeah. They're not real people. <laughs> yeah. Also, you know, yeah, also, because Adam and Eve, imagine that, like, Adam comes home after a long day in the garden, and she accuses him of having an affair, and he's like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> it's just you. <laughs> you smell weird. And then, a fucking, perfume. and then a snake slides out of her and fucking goes away, the devil. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, so there was a snake with an apple. Yeah. Was it Adam and Eve, Charlie? I, I can't say no to that, wow. but I think this is a worthy designation between activity and exercise. Mm. So people have been active forever, right? They hunt, they build things, they dig holes, they do that stuff. But exercise is structured, planned activity. So our first kind of example of structured, planned activity is probably from the ancient Greeks, uh, when they were preparing for the Olympics. Right. Now, some of the writing and the journals and stuff we have from these folks, you know, back in, you know, way in the BC times, like on my shirt, mm -hmm. uh, they're having like 12 month long, like training and nutrition programs that are actually not bad. They're having variation in their exercise. They're planning things out and they're actually like getting really good results at the Olympics. And then, you know, we kind of fall off for, several thousands of years until the last 50 years but it's probably the ancient greeks and then most of the, the 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 communities and people in the bible and the ancient books like that are also exercising but they don't have like the detailed journals and stuff like that is there an argument that exercise has made us into a bunch of slobs here i go um okay you go out in the street now and people will be wearing active wear Right? And I, hey, big fan of women in Lululemon pants. Yeah. Big mm -hmm. fan. Big mm -hmm. fan. Yeah. But it's uh, slovenly. We're track suits and all that. I, I, I'm guilty as the next person. Yeah, yeah. Track suits. Like, you watch the Sweat Great Depression. Sweatpants. You are... watch the Great Depression. Watch any footage of the Great Depression. All these cunts are unemployed and they're wearing fedoras and ties. 
Uh, they have no job to get they're, they're mowing the lawn in those. They're, they're, they're <laughs> lining up for back, soup. Back in the 50s. <laughs> they're, they're lining up for soup in a three peat suit. Yep. Yeah. I uh, blame exercise for the downfall of our society. Yeah. Sweatpants. Nobody is working out in sweatpants, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you had sweatpants, you would have been the last bloke to get a job during the Depression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Adam Sandler only wears basketball shorts, oh, I'm pretty Adam, sure. Adam, well, Adam Sandler, he's very funny when you look at it. He really does just fall into his wardrobe. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't care. I love that about him. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, the Greeks are not in shape now. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> they got good food. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they got, well, it's not just food. They're... Uh, yeah, yeah. That was the one country where I was like, all right, on the Europe tour. I was like, I'm home. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, one, no one looked at me like, look at this fat ass. They're, <laughs> they're still smoking like it's the mid 90s. Yeah. They're, oh, they're, they're, all they're, the they're, time. They've got, they got no problems, the Greeks. They're going yeah. for it. Uh, well, I guess, you know, it was the first Olympics. They were all naked. I remember that from our episode. Yeah, they were, they're, they're all naked. But Pete naked. I think, shape. look, I think, because it was meant to do with like wind resistance or something like that, but. <laughs> If you fucking Still Greek, flopping around. Greek people are fucking hairy, man. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon you could get pulled back from the bloody wind resistance. <laughs> You'd be running along like George the Animal Steel. <laughs> All right, who, it's a fucking deep cut, people. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. He's <laughs> <laughs> a professional wrestler, George the Animal Steel. He was a hairy. Was okay, hairy, so yeah. what happened with George the Animal Steel <laughs> was we weren't sure if he was mentally challenged or not. Yeah, that's true. Right? That's there was right. there was an element of... I think he was. There's an element of he might be a simpleton. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. And so he was put in the ring and he was bald <laughs> and he was hairy. And then if he would win, for no apparent reason, he would start eating the cushions on the turnbuckles. <laughs> that's right. He, he, he definitely <laughs> was mentally challenged. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we were like, oh, he's crazy. He doesn't know what he's doing. It was just like an animal was put in there to wrestle and then Rowdy Roddy Piper would put a snake around his neck. Yeah. <laughs> no, wait, that, that's Jake the oh, Snake. Oh, that's Jake, Jake the Snake. Jake the Snake Roberts. Yeah, Jake the Snake, the snake yeah. 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 All right, who, I don't, is it Eugene or Eugen? Eugen, Eugene Sandow, is it... Uh, Am I saying Eugene right? It's no- Eugen. 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 Oh, Eugen. So yeah. sorry, Jim. Who is Eugen Sandow and why is he relevant to exercise he, science? He was the person who decided who was going to exercise and who was not going to exercise and who was going to be okay and who wasn't going to be okay. And that's how they came up with the name Eugenics. Mm. Oh, he's the supplement guy. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think Jim yeah. means eugenics, like the uh, like what Hitler did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think he was going. Oh yeah, that new, one. Eugenics, <laughs> eugenics is the supplement one. Right? Eugenics, like, yeah. new, yeah. new genics, yeah. like Nugent. I always look at that. I go Nugent. Enix. They shouldn't have called so it. Jim changed his answer. So I don't bad. think that gets him any more points. Who is Eugen Sandow? No, so Eugen Sandow. I kind of put that as like a stand-in for. Uh, there was a resurgence in exercise but a very particular sector of exercise in like the late 1800s, early 1900s. And this is like the circus strongman guys. So like the classic, like big fat dude in a onesie with like a, a 3000 pound dumbbell, like those guys, the circus strong guys started to put exercise back on the map. And they were the but ones the in the dumbbells is, were just a big bowling ball at the end. I always like that. The, yeah, weight, yeah. the weight was round. And a no lot one, of them made their own dumbbells. No one thought to make it into discs. <laughs> I want to see what he looked like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I, I picked Eugen because a lot of these guys were big guys. They'd be picking up horses, getting shot by cannonball, stuff like that. But Eugen is referred to as the godfather of modern bodybuilding because he had a good body. So not only did he go around and lift stuff and be strong, but he flexed his muscles and he got... Yeah, in the late 1800s, this guy would be... I mean, he's like ripped for now, but he would would be... He he even... He's fucking unbelievably, like, definition. Yeah, late 1800s, he would be... People oh. might people might be afraid of him the way he looked in the later. I'm afraid of like, him now. Like, yeah, yeah, Eugene. <laughs> Eugene would have left a lot of broken hearts if he was traveling around that circus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When Eugene and came so- to town, the women all knew about it. Holy hell! <laughs> all the men. Whatever way Probably he went. mostly the men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a bit magic, Mikey, isn't it? Yeah. I'm sorry. Did, were you still talking about him? Sorry, Charlie. Then. Oh yeah, I was just say he's so obviously pretty uh, fantastic physiques. So he was a good circus attraction. And so that 
you know, we call him the grand, uh, godfather of modern bodybuilding. And so uh, still today, the winner of the Mr. Olympia bodybuilding competition, which is like the World Series of bodybuilding, basically wins the Sandow Trophy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want it to I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I win. What is the Hill Muscle Model? Jim thought it was, I don't know. He's Vanessa, who lived up. in the Hollywood yeah, Hills. Yeah, Vanessa. She's a good girl. Lives in the Hollywood Hills. She's a model. You know, he didn't quite <laughs> models, it, but I can't confirm that <laughs> okay, someone named it. Vanessa was not around at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, From the TV show. So the Hill Hills. Muscle Model, I think it's a good time to keep in mind that, you know, the theory of gravity is over four hundred years old mitochondria we known about for 250 years the hill muscle model was our first published understanding of how muscle worked and so it's named hill for av hill the scientist who came up with it he published this in 1938 so less than a hundred years uh we've had a theory as to how muscle worked so essentially he just produced this model because at this time we knew for you know we didn't know why but muscle is stronger uh, lengthening than it is shortening. So if you go lift weights, you can lower something uh, heavier weight than what you can lift up. We didn't know why, so A.V. Hill theorized that there were other components like connective tissue and stuff like that that increased the strength of muscle in this time. And so that was kind of our first attempt at uh, recognizing how muscle worked, and we actually still teach that in college today. It's 100 years old. Yeah. Mm. And what is the sliding filament theory? I'm well, gonna... Jim did get a filament from a light bulb, so I got him like a tenth of a point on that. Wow. Okay. Uh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Four we're being two. nice. Uh, can't, can't slide light. Sliding light, filament said. theory yeah. is a more up-to-date understanding, and it's not the most up-to-date, but it's it's pretty relevant. It essentially is suggesting that we have what we call filaments in our muscles, which are contractile proteins. So for a muscle to lengthen and shorten, those filaments kind of slide past each other. So if a muscle gets shorter, these filaments pull each other. If it lengthens, they crawl apart to lengthen mm-hmm. the muscle. And so a muscle is made up of a bunch of different tiny units called sarcomeres that have these filaments or contractile proteins in them. So in all thousands of these sarcomeres either lengthen or shorten, the muscle gets longer, it gets shorter, and that's how contraction works. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, is Amy Tan, the author of the Joy Luck Club, the first person to start a fitness club? I yes. don't believe so. <laughs> the first person to start a fitness club was Jack Lalanne. You might recognize that. No, name. I would always say Lalanne. Is it Lalanne? La it Lalanne? might be Lalanne. I don't really know. Yeah, yeah, There's I'm, two ends, and it seems like they don't need to be there. But he, he was a guy that would like <laughs> he would like tow the boats with his mouth. Like with a rope, yeah. in his mouth. Yeah, like swim is insane. What's that got to do with these muscles? He would swim and tow Strong like tw- twenty boats with his, I don't know, with a rope in his mouth. That's all I remember. That's all I got. Yeah. So Jack Lalane started the first fitness club, and I believe he started this in Oakland, California, in 1936. So this was back when doctors, you know, were telling you to, you know, smoke. A pack of cigarettes and just do cocaine if you're feeling bad or whatever. So he comes around and starts a health club, and doctors are saying, days. "Don't go to this health club. He's going to hurt you. He's going to make you muscle bound, and you won't be able to move and all that stuff." So it, it took him a while to k- kind of get some sort of public support. And by the '50s, he actually finally had his TV show where they were doing exercise on TV, and he was kind of spreading the word. And that lasted through the '80s. Um, and during this time, also was what this is cra- wait a minute, crazy. He's so it was the first time that we were on. Oh, okay, TV had only just been invented, but the first time yeah. the public had heard about exercise. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He so, had a I mean, juicer nobody- too. He had a popular juicer. And when? And when this, yeah. was the word? I guess exercise or something exercise. Like we already had the word, right? When was it attached? To- yeah. Yeah. I, to be honest, I don't know how that got attached to the activity of planned exercise. I have no idea how that came about. Would you like to exercise your right to the Fifth Amendment or some shit? Yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, All your stuff. Yeah, I, I'm That's pretty it. sure. Remember, remember that that uh, Jim Carrey bit on In Living Color with the juice juice weasel, and the guy's like juicing, and he goes, "Hey guys," and he turns <laughs> invisible. You know that one? I'm pretty sure that was Jack Lane he was making fun of. It remember. probably is. Yeah, yeah. Look at the look how. But uh, yeah, so. Force mentioned all of his crazy, like, not only is he towing boats with his mouth, he's towing like 20 boats underwater. He's swimming the length of the Golden Gate Bridge with his hands and feet shackled 
together. Yeah. That's so he would do yeah. all these crazy, uh, you know, feats of just fitness in general, you know, not insane strength. He obviously had insane endurance, but he's just fit in general. And he had this daily regimen. He'd get up and work out every two or two hours every day and eat this, you know, specific diet. And I guess he died uh, in 2011, I believe. And he died from pneumonia, I want to say. And the legend has it that the day before he died, so he's 96 years old, the day before he died, he got up and exercised for two hours. <laughs> and the next day he died. Yeah. <laughs> so exercise does kill you. Yeah. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of people. We actually, we had the, a similar um, version of that in Australia, a guy called Dingo Joe. Is this true? That's a better name. I was like, that could be real. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> He's Dingo Joe. Dingo Joe yeah. could do anything. Fuck kangaroos. Yeah, he, he boxed kangaroos. You know, that's the thing. You can box kangaroos. Get exercise. You just can? They, they used to have... I mean, they'll kick your ass. This is the thing. Is they used Not to my have, ass. They used to have in these carnivals, right, they'd put a bo- they'd put gloves on a, on a kangaroo, <laughs> and then they'd say, who here can beat a kangaroo? Come on, if you're coming to the ring, you can bloody beat a, beat a kangaroo. Come on, <laughs> come one, come all. <laughs> like that, right? And then drunk blokes would get in the ring, and they'd put gloves on, and then they'd punch the kangaroo, but the kangaroo's got such a big tail and such big feet, it's a tripod. Yeah. yeah, you can't knock that animal down. So it would be concussing up until the next person came in. Jesus, oh, you think the kangaroos concussed? Yeah, that makes it sadder. Yeah, I, sad. I thought they were just winning. That's a, that's a punch drug <laughs> kangaroo, and then it could re- it, it could go back on its tail and kick you, and it sort of <clears> naturally <throat> boxes, so it, it looks good because it naturally does a few yeah. jabs and all that stuff. But um, yeah, they they well, some animals have like a woodpecker, for instance, has like specialized. Bring like cavities like for in their in their skull so they don't get concussions. I've, I've ta- we, we've ta- we've talked we've yeah, talked about this before. My father used to go. What was the name of the tent? Shaman. Shaman's tent, right? Billy Shaman. Yeah, Billy Shaman had a tent that went around Queensland, and he would bring some average boxers along, and he'd go in the tent, and then he'd go, "Who here can beat my boy?" And then drunk men with like drunk men with no boxing skills whatsoever would gamble money that they could beat that guy up in the ring and so they might be a bigger bloke against a smaller bloke mm-hmm. who's actually trained and then the bloke would just beat the shit out of people and that was <laughs> that was the show was locals <laughs> was locals fighting <laughs> professional boxers and it's a small town he grew up in so you'd know like oh fucking Gary's up there having a go yeah <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm, you should bring it back. I yeah. just, I'm watch googling can kangaroos get concussions, and I, is there an Australian football league team named the Kangaroos? Kangaroos, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of those guys. Getting- <laughs> 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 because they keep just showing names of people. I'm like, oh, Ben Jacobs. Yeah, the yeah, okay. AFL team. Called yeah, Kangaroos. all right. Well, I can't look that up right now. Then it just keeps going up. That um, mitochondria. Or no, is that where at? Yeah, mitochondria. I asked you if you knew what it was. You ever <laughs> seen a kangaroo with CTU or whatever it is? CTU. CTU. Yeah. CTU. <laughs> <laughs> um, mitochondria is a river runs from Arizona to California. The, the mighty mi- mitochondria. The mitochondria. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I will say that was Jim's most entertaining answer. Yeah, I like that answer. It was a good one. Gets a point. Yeah, yeah I got a point. What is the mitochondria? Well, I, it's known as the powerhouse of the cell. But what talk about it with exercise science? Really. Yeah, so the mitochondria, we were always told is the powerhouse of the cell, but that's pretty much as far as we ever got in school, right? Nobody ever told you why it's the powerhouse of the cell. So this kind of combines metabolism with this one, is that metabolism, Jim mostly got right, is the concept of burning calories, right? Mm-hmm. So the food you eat has calories, and when we digest it, absorb it, we break it down into its simplest forms, and it gets shuttled to our cells. And then in our cells, that's where metabolism happens. They break that food down into what we call ATP, adenosine triphosphate. That's the energy currency of the body. We can't move, we can't think, we can't do anything without ATP. And so the mitochondria is the area where most of that ATP production comes from. Um, it, it has various enzymes and cycles and transport chains and all these things that the food, when you break it down into you know fatty acids or uh, glucose, stuff like that, these things can get into the mitochondria and out comes ATP and now you can live. Are, pe- are there certain people or body shapes that are more likely to be able to build mu- muscle with ease in comparison to other body shapes, like these mesomorphs and all this type of stuff, right? Or, or are we all sort of starting at the same spot 
there's a ton of genetic variance in this. So part of the body shape thing really comes down to like your genetic framework. Some people have a genetic predisposition to building muscle, getting stronger. Some people have genetic predisposition to uh, being good at marathons. So really all comes down to your genetics, but if your genetics predispose you to being bigger and stronger, odds are you're going to have a larger frame to which you can add more muscle mass. So it's funny that you get into the the field of like sports performance, you start to work with some high-level athletes. It's the difference between like a professional American football player and someone like me is insurmountable. I, I wish people like, you know, all the people that watch sports on, on TV that you do this, do that, whatever. I wish people could just see some of these people up close because it's astounding how much faster, stronger and more conditioned uh, like professional athletes can get. And a lot of that just comes back to their genetic predisposition. Mm. So I'm not going to be an athlete. No. Um, how does weight loss work? Jim says you need a comedy special, you starve yourself, or you need to burn off more calories than you're consuming. Is what, it that easy? Are you a fan of the fasting? I'm a fasting guy. W were you a fan of the fasting or do you think fasting's bad? I think it's fine. I mean, ultimately, you came back to the right answer on this, and this was calorie balance, right? You have to burn more calories than you consume, and fasting is a fantastic way to do that. If you don't eat for two-thirds of the day, you're going to have a hard time eating more calories than you burn, right? So it restricts your eating window. You naturally are going to eat less food. Now, from a health standpoint, there could be a few more uh, unique effects of fasting that, you know, depending on how often you do it, how well you do it, stuff like that, you could get some unique effects. But ultimately, weight loss is going to come down to that energy balance. I now, that feel energy better balance, after I fast. Oh, go ahead. I feel physically better. Not just like, yeah. I, because like, they reckon it, it helps your gut bacteria. We did another podcast on that years ago, but that yeah. was, anyway. Yep, yep, yeah. And, and a lot of people report that as not only does it help you feel better, but there might be a, uh, your brain is also involved in metabolism. If I'm fasting, smarter on fasting days. Yeah, and people will often report that because your brain uh, is metabolically active, and generally when you're fasting or if you're on a ketogenic diet, you're in a state of ketosis, sometimes that can be a like a smoother form of energy for the brain, and it helps people uh, think more clearly, things like that, and so they, they feel smarter. They remember things a little bit better. I heard so there the, are the some theory other was that, fasting, you're, sure. that you're feeling weak because you haven't eaten and then like cavemen they would stop chasing after the saber-toothed tiger and think oh god i have to sit down and make a trap is mm. that right i don't know <laughs> i didn't hear the first part of that what do you reckon, what do you reckon? <laughs> that you had a theory about the fasting you yeah the, the theory that you're that you're smarter you're smarter when you fast because you have to find food in a non-physical way because you're depleted hmm. that's an interesting one it could be a little bit just based on how your metabolism shifts to go towards a more robust form of energy being fat and ketones. Mm. Uh, maybe that does help you think a little bit better. Yeah. And it could go back to that. <clears throat> it's a good idea. Go. Teach it to the kids. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Write a textbook. Uh, yeah, the Jim Jeffries theory. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, lifting weights. How does it make your muscles bigger and stronger? Is it bad for your heart? We'll talk about weights now. Yeah, so this is the one where about 20 years ago, Jim's concept of tearing muscle down, repairing it, getting bigger, I would have said, yes, that's correct. But in the last 20 years, we've made a lot of headway onto how uh, our body responds to exercise, and the ripping, tearing, and building thing hasn't really held up too well. So we look at when a muscle grows from exercise, certain things have to happen. You could go running and your calves are sore for the next day because you had some ripping and tearing in your calves. But running generally doesn't lead to bigger and stronger muscles, even though there was muscle damage. In fact, I could stab Jim in the thigh and it would be really mean of me to do that. I would damage his muscle and it wouldn't grow back mm. any stronger. And so you'd muscle get covered damage, in cum. <laughs> what's that? It's nothing. It's <laughs> said you'd be covered in cum because I'd enjoy it. You see, it's, oh it's, well, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, funny. it's a side I'd, effect. For I'd some. ejaculate because you stabbed me in the thigh. <laughs> oh, because he did it, or just you like being stabbed? Just anyone? Oh, it doesn't matter if it's Charlie. It's or not. Anyone yeah. who stabs me will get covered in cum. <laughs> I wouldn't put that out there. I, I don't kink shame. <laughs> yeah. 
So essentially, we just have to go back to the stimulus of exercise. We know that lifting weights is what generally causes our muscles to get bigger and stronger. And so what lifting weights do is they impose what we call tension on our muscle. It's a pulling force that causes our muscle to lengthen. We have to work really hard to get that weight back up. Our body senses that tension and then our muscles signal and they say, hey, that was crazy. We need to be bigger and stronger to deal with that in the future. So our body says, fine, we'll build you up bigger and stronger. So it all comes back to the effort you expend while lifting weight. That's generally what's going to cause your muscles mm. to get bigger and stronger. Hmm. Okay. Cool. And is it bad for your heart? No. But Jim had a very good distinction here that if somebody is, maybe they have uh, uh uh, high blood pressure or blockages or cardiac uh, or chronic heart failure or something like that, probably not the best idea to exercise uh, with resistance training or weights. But if you're perfectly healthy, lifting weights can actually be good for your heart. Uh, there are some unique effects of lifting weight like nitric oxide release, stuff like that, that helps dilate your blood vessels. Uh, but lifting weights also helps the elasticity of your blood vessels. Because you have spikes in blood pressure, if you pick up something really heavy, this or these blood pressure spikes can help your blood vessels uh, expand uh, a little bit better so that your blood pressure uh, will generally be lower throughout daily life. So... For most people, lifting weights, good for your heart, actually. If you only had to do one weight lifting activity, which one would it be? I'm going to go bench press. I respect that. Uh, oh, I've nice. torn my pecs too many times to agree. I would go deadlift. I like deadlifts. Deadlift. How much do you bench? Well, I'm going to give you the classic gym bro example and say back in my day uh -huh. the most i've ever done is 375 oh. right now i couldn't give you 300 i don't think yeah but you're I, acting like we're even gonna, close was, to that i was gonna <laughs> brag i i, I do 100 yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good that's better bad, than 99 man. right no, it's, it's pretty good. when you look at it it's things on the end of it yeah 300 i do 100 I, amos gill came over to my house and i have a little gym area right and Amos, Amos Gill couldn't bench press as much as me. And he's a young fella. He was wobbling like all fuck he was. He looks like he'd be good. He out. looks like he's good, but he couldn't. He's a fair And I'm saying it. I'm saying it out here. And if you see him, make sure you tell him that I said this. <laughs> he's a weak man. You'll probably Jim, maybe first. you're naturally genetically predisposed to be good at bench press. You do 300. I'm only a third as good as you. Yeah, but you have a big torso. I do have a big torso. That's why, yeah. Little, so that's, that's yeah, right. see. And you don't like see? the legs. I don't yeah. have a little tiny legs. Yeah, so that we've figured it mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Stay with the torsos. Mm. Um, can children, should children lift weights? Yeah, I want to know this one. So this is a very controversial one. The short answer is yes, children can absolutely lift weights. Now, the long answer here is that if you imagine children exercising, they're running, they're jumping around on a playground, they're you know jumping off of a couch to to do your WWE top rope on your friends, stuff like that. Mm. Anytime you run, you jump. Uh, or anything like that, you can exert five to ten times your body weight on your bones and your joints in your lower body. I don't know of any children that can lift five to ten times their body weight in something like a deadlift or a squat. And so if we look at it from a pure physics and biomechanics uh, standpoint, lifting weights will never impose more force or, or, uh, uh, impact on a child than running or jumping ever would mm. and on top of that lifting weights especially in younger age you know kids that are seven eight nine years old they don't have the the hormonal what we call milieu the mixture of hormones in the body to respond and get big and strong and stuff like that they're not going to get a whole lot stronger but what they will get is what we call uh like muscle coordination motor learning if you teach an eight-year-old how to squat and do a push-up correctly and things like that, they become more efficient in these ranges of motion, which helps them be safer during exercise, more injury resilient. And then by the time they're a teenager, they're going to be leaps and bounds ahead of you know the other kids that they're playing against or whatever it is that they're doing. So short and long answer, yes, children can lift weights, and I believe that they should. What age do they start um, seeing the benefits? It, it kind of depends on when they start to get that hormonal milieu that we talked about. 
So usually, you know, if you see a, a 13, 14 year old kid and he's got a mustache coming in, he's probably going to be able to build some muscle lifting weight. Um, but it just kind of depends. Sometimes, you know, I was full grown with a beard when I was 12 because I'm short, right? But some people might not be full grown. Do, do, do short people always get beards? Do they? Or is that, is that, why? Uh, it's just my genetics. Right. <laughs> but I was a grown man when I was 12. So. I was ready to lift weights then and get bigger and stronger, but some people, they might not have that till they're 16, 17, or 18. Right. Yeah. Uh, why do you get out of breath while running? So Jim kind of got it where any activity in general, whether it be running, wrestling, sex, anything where your body is running away burning from more sex. calories. What's that? Running away from sex. I'm just mixing it all together. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> uh, any. Anytime your body's you. burning a lot of calories, anytime we're doing a lot of metabolism, we are producing uh, byproducts. So like if you turn on a car, exhaust comes out of the tailpipe, right? It's heat, it's carbon dioxide, it's water. These are all byproducts of breaking down fuel. Our bodies do the same thing. If we break down fuel, we have byproducts. And one of those byproducts is carbon dioxide. And so how this works is if you start breaking down a lot of fuel, you start producing a lot of carbon dioxide, our blood senses that we have chemo receptors in our blood vessels they send signals back to our brain saying we need to offload this carbon dioxide and so you start breathing harder so the breathing isn't necessarily an oxygen need it's to get rid of carbon dioxide mm. okay all right last question here what are steroids and how do they work um uh you inject them in the muscle uh, yeah inject them in the muscle jim said chemicals make them expand you still need to exercise on them uh, doesn't like him the food. Mm. Yeah, I Jim basically got it right here. I think I added this because I think there's an important distinction between the types of steroids. So I had an English professor that I just, I hated her uh, way back in my freshman year of college. And she would always make this stupid joke that in allergy season, she wouldn't be allowed to participate in Major League Baseball because she was on corticosteroids. Corticosteroids are not that anabolic is a funny joke. steroids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good, right? <laughs> Corticosteroids are not anabolic steroids. So when we talk about steroids in, re in, in regard to building muscle, we're talking about anabolic steroids. That refers to the building of tissue. So Jim crushed it with testosterone. Steroids are testosterone or derivatives of testosterone. You inject these, they get into your muscles, they basically tell your or they tell your body to build up the muscles, essentially. And now there's a lot and of people so, getting um, testosterone replacement. Is that different from steroids? Because the, the legal like like men my age getting a bit of testosterone, or is that is that just the same? It's the same. It, it's we're I think steroids is just kind of like that umbrella term for it. But TRT, testosterone replacement's like the responsible way to do it, right? Where you're just taking essentially Actually, a replacement dose. Yeah. People that are on steroids uh, to get bigger, faster, stronger could be taking five to ten times uh, like a natural human dosage. So there, there's levels to it, obviously. Um, but to that point, I, TRT is, has fantastic results for men, you know, especially 35 and up for all sorts of things. Um, and then to Jim's point, the exercise component, the exercise plays a huge role in that. With if you just start taking testosterone, you might gain a pound or two of muscle. You might burn a little bit of fat. But if you exercise, you lift weights, that's where that testosterone and plus your body's natural response to the exercise really works together to make you bigger and stronger. All right. Um, now is the part of our show called Dinner Party Facts. We ask our expert to give us a fact, something obscure, interesting that they can use to impress people. What do you got for us, Charlie? Um, I'm going to go with my first one here. So this Jim actually kind of brought this up a little bit when he kind of brought up the, the concept of metabolism that if you're just sitting around doing nothing all day, you still burn 1,800 to 2,000 calories. And th this kind of depends on your gender, your age, your height, weight, stuff like that. But generally, for most people, you need between about 1,000 and 2,000 calories a day just to stay alive. Now, if you laid in bed all day, you'd still burn that many calories. And that's you know, people think about that and they kind of get their mind blown by it because they're like, well, I'm not moving around. How am I burning calories? Your brain, your heart, your liver, and your kidneys all burn more calories than your muscles do. Because you think about all these things are active all the time, no matter what, 
where a muscle at rest isn't using energy. Muscle at rest doesn't use that much energy at all, but all these other organ systems use a ton of energy all the time, and that's where your resting metabolism or your resting metabolic rate comes from. Hmm. So I'm exercising right now. Nice, yeah, dude. burning calories right now. You're burning calories. I don't know if you're exercising. But the I TV, am. your TV theory is going to hold my, up. My right? liver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing liver squats. Well, this is uh, the time of year that everyone starts to think about exercising towards New Year's Eve. Um, so if you are interested in learning more, follow Charlie on Instagram at Charlie Ottinger, and that's O-T-T-I-N-G-E-R, um, or at Radioactive Life, that's Radioactive without an E, Life, for more in- information about fitness, uh, tips, info like that. And you can go to the website, RadioactiveLife.com. We'll have all that information on our website as well. Uh, thanks for being here, Charlie. Thanks for being on the podcast, yeah, Charlie. We appreciate me. your time, mate. Uh, if you're ever at a party and someone comes up to you and goes, oh, my liver doesn't burn any calories, go, <laughs> well, I don't know about that, and walk away. Good night, Australia. And don't forget, we will be off the next two weeks, the 26th and January 2nd. We'll be back the week after that. What? Yeah.